Punam Singh, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Perfect, perfect. Good evening, Dr. Pandya. Yeah, we can hear you. Sharing, sharing bank. Let uh, other panelists can switch on the video. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Good, good evening, uh, Dr. Anirban. Good evening, ma'am. Good, good evening, all, and good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes, I think we can start. Good evening, everyone. Did you all know that uh, back in the year 2006, Missile Man of India, none other than Bharat Ratna, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, visited Switzerland on May 26. To honor Dr. Kalam and to commemorate that visit, Switzerland declared that day as their science day. Good evening, everyone. I, Shazia Khan, welcome you all to the session on scope of IoT and AI in entrepreneurship post-COVID, organized under the aegis of Institutional Innovation Council by the Innovation Lab of V School, Mumbai, on the occasion of National Science Day. Every year, India celebrates National Science Day on February 28th to remember the discovery of the Raman effect by Bharat Ratan Sir C. V. Raman. And a discovery that also earned him the Nobel Prize in the year 1930 in the field of physics. India had been a cradle of science since science immemorial. There are numerous inventions and discoveries that India has given to the world, like zero, Ayurveda, yoga buttons, yoga, the buttons that we put on our clothes, ink, wireless communication, the uh, USB that we use on our laptops and computers, fiber optics, just to name a few. We all are familiar with the names COVID Shield and Covaxin. COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of a sustainable future. Every year, National Science Day is celebrated under various themes. And this year's theme is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future. So this is the uh, backdrop in mind that we look forward to on this, uh, on this day, National Science Day, nine, this year, 2022. So in today's session, we look forward to the insights on how entrepreneurs and innovators can leverage IoT and AI in the post-COVID world. We are privileged to have among us two eminent speakers on this, uh, experts on this field. I now uh, request my colleague, Dr. Garima Sharma, to uh, please introduce one of our guests. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Anirban Sur. Uh, Dr. Sur is an associate professor working at uh, Symbiosis Institute of Technology, Symbiosis International University. Dr. Sur graduated in mechanical engineering with distinction from one of the premier institutes of Maharashtra. He has received his master's degree from Birla Institute of Technology, Mesra Rachi, with honors. He also received a national scholarship in high school and he started his career in steel industry. Later, he switched to academics. Dr. Sur has worked as assistant and associate professor in different parts of India, like Merit Institute of Technology, Indraprastha Engineering College, Delhi, Amity University, Noida, etc. His research area is microheat exchanger design, micro lattice structure and its application, adsorption absorption refrigeration system, desiccant cooling, harvesting renewable energy using uh, Internet of Things and machine learning. Sir has completed four projects funded by MSME India, National Institute for Research and Development in Defense, Shipbuilding, ISHRAE India. He has published a number of research papers in international and national journals and presented papers in international and national conferences. He has published three books and several book chapters. He's an active member of ISHRAE and life member of ISHMT IE India. Uh, we welcome you, sir. And I now request Dr. Shazia to introduce our next speaker for the day, Dr. Sherlin Pandya. Dr. Shazia. Thank you, Dr. Poonam. It is our pleasure to have amongst us Dr. Sharnil Pandya. Just a brief glimpse of his, uh, I should say, uh, magnificent personality. Dr. Sharnil Pandya is an enthusiast, enthusiastic educationist and an active researcher. His research interests include Internet of Things, Cognitive Internet of Things, Intelligent Sensors and Sensing Systems, and Deep Learning. He has a special interest in interdisciplinary research and projects. He has published and presented in reputed international conferences, which uh, were organized in China, Dubai, and UK. And Web of Science Index journals, he has to his credit, and three published patents. He has also worked on a funded project as a co-investigator approved by Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, that is Department of Science and Technology, Government of India worth 16 lakhs and 10 lakhs. He has completed an international research project, NVIDIA, GPU, Research Center Project, USA. He has guided and still guiding numerous uh, undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctorate students from computer engineering and other disciplines. In addition to academics and research, Sir is also a reviewer for reputed journals such as IEEE Transactions on Industrial Electronics, IEEE Internet of Things, IEEE Sensors Journal and Transactions on Emerging Telecommunications Technologies. This is just a brief, brief glimpse of um, Sir's personality. We are really privileged to have both of you esteemed speakers with us on this auspicious day. I would now uh, request Dr. Anirban Sur and Dr. Sharnil Pandya to please uh, take over from here. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So, first of all, good evening, all. Uh, am I audible, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, audible. Yeah, fine. Uh, so, and also, thank you for giving us opportunity to say our knowledge to your students. So, I think at the end, students should get some input uh, from us and uh, they can encash it, they can go ahead with this knowledge. Uh, that is our aim. Right. So uh, I'll not take much more time about that. So it is 6.38. So <clears throat> uh, first half an hour to 40 minutes, I'll take uh, a brief view about the what is the IoT, what is the Internet of Things, and uh, how wide is required in the market, and what is the current scenario, which is the thrust area where the IoT is required, and uh, how AIML will play with IoT, because these are no, uh, interconnected, like IoT first, uh, then if I talk about IoT, we should know about something about the sensor, transducer, actuators. Without that, 
we cannot go ahead because uh, you know uh, basically we are talking about the internet of things so the things like here also i am talking so my microphone so that is interconnected with the internet and then you are uh, getting my voice how so there i have on sensor in my uh, microphone so there it normally you know absorb the sound and then it's convert in electrical waves or there's a electromagnetic waves and through that through this internet it goes to the clouds and from there you have a receiver so you are receiving this signal and there we have another converter so that is a, a transducer and there you have this speaker uh, i have and you have this microphone so from which you are getting the uh, my voice so this is a basic example of internet of things so see uh, just before the covid uh, we don't know we, we don't, did not have any idea like how the microphone or you know the speaker uh, will help us uh, to uh, means but now you know everybody knows uh, this zoom platform everybody knows about lot of platforms at the teams microsoft teams then google meets so previously we all we all, we normally use the skype but now there are a lot of such kind of platforms are come up and then the backup is the hardware like we have microphone we have this uh, bluetooth microphone bluetooth uh, uh, this speaker so a lot of you know kind of things have come up but thing is that what next and what are the, there's a huge you know kind of market is going to open so that the student can go there student can uh, in case those things so today's talk will be that uh, after this covid or this still now the covid is there some part but still uh, that big elephant of the covid near out 90% has gone 10% is still remaining but we learned lot like how uh, you know um, that uh, touchless technology uh, we have adopted day by day so and that touchless means yes definitely we need some kind of technology so that our all kind of systems should be interconnected to each other and like i am sitting in pune uh the students are throughout the india and i know somebody means maybe well some the world they are watching these so we all are interconnected through the internet so that is the best example of iot right so from here i am going to start my uh, you know uh, the speech and it will be there are a lot of lot of such kind of you know <clears throat> examples will be there and i think um, you will definitely enjoy the session right uh so can we start now ma'am yes sir yes yeah. sir okay so just one uh, instructions to students uh, sir has uh, agreed or sir has sir wants this that maybe the students can ask the questions and he would look forward to both of them would look forward to an interactive session but just not to disturb the flow of thoughts that uh, sir and uh, dr sharnil must be having so i request students to just put their questions in the chat box and we will address we will try sir will try to address all the questions maybe towards the end is that okay sir yes yes and uh, definitely right, uh, sir. yeah and you can write in the chat box also if you want so uh, yes we definitely reach to you and try to uh, okay, or try uh, means best to solve your queries right thank so, you sir. well uh, let's uh, start the session so i'll share the screen first so my screen is visible its ppt is visible yes sir yeah so let's start so already that uh, nice introduction has been given by both of ma'am so thanks for that yes uh, we are from uh, symbiosis international university and yeah uh, we have uh, you know uh, graduated post graduated undergraduate and this phd students are there and like i have seven students right now who are working 
and a lot of uh, so different kind of projects are doing so see uh, our ppt we have uh, means created in such a way that first part i'll cover so that will give you a example of you know what is basically internet of things what is this requirement and you know, what is the market presently the market scenario what are the areas where this internet of things is working and why this ai ml is also come up to the uh, field because yes by the from the internet of things uh, will generate the data like we have a lot of sensors are there so as that basic i'll cover so definitely learn and then from uh, next session that's we are giving like first part is like this it is the basic of iot and uh, and then in the second part uh, that sanil sir will cover you the kind of projects we are doing and kind of projects uh, which are looking for and what are the scope the student can do it so let's start uh, so it's a story of industrial revolutions because you know uh, we are talking about industry 4.0 Uh, some people are talking about the we are entering into the industry 5.0. Uh, so what is the meaning of that? Like industry 1.0, industry 2.0, industry 3.0, industry 4.0. So these are the eras. How the industry are going to change? Especially, you know, we are talking about the uh, post-COVID era. So that is around we are look entering into the industry 5.0, where we are talking about uh, virtual reality. uh then uh this uh different kind of way like uh, in your virtual classes like student can see what the teacher is teaching so that the visualization will come up like you are giving some case study so that case study will come up in such a way student can visualize it so that is basically augmented reality virtual reality are there so that is the era of industry 5.0 so but before that i just give you some idea about the what is the industry 1.0 was so i think uh, this is uh, the picture is visible for all so it's a basically a steam engine and that was we you know it was developed by james what it is a hydro powers fossil fuels conversion of uh, engines mode so we developed this so this is the first era of industry revolutions where these steam engines then big dams was developed um, uh, all of you know dr visheshwarya was there so uh, he made lot of dams in india so that you know uh, so but the thing is that there at the time between 1800 uh, the way people were thinking that was in bigger way so that that was the first stage of you know industry 1.0 where we are looking for this steam developing of uh, some kind of you know uh, technology from the steam then from the hydro hydraulics like water right then after that the technology improved so what came so that uh, this this is uh, called electrical energy mass production basically you know that uh, bulb came like electric bulb hmm, because then from hydraulic power i am talking so from hydraulic power then electricity generated okay so once the electricity was generated so now what required at the time we need it to develop such kind of instruments by which we can glow our surroundings okay so like in the special in the evening or night time uh, we uh, in the special in the dark time like we need to lighting something so that's why uh, we developed this uh, technology uh, between the era of 90 to 10 just see that is a you know small small kind of um, instruments came up like different kind of bulb then filaments then the cover so all those and that started the mass production like huge requirement was there so you cannot uh, could not develop a single one what we need we need a mass like at a time you have to develop 1000 bulbs 2000 bulbs so such kind of technology we need so people um, develop those right so as per our requirement the technology are going to change step by step you just see then come to the third part so in the third this is called the telecommunication or the program program programmable logic so what it is 
then people uh, know human uh, understood that yes if we are going for mass production so we need a kind of robot kind of you know machines which can self um, react it, it can self monitor it can self you know work uh, so uh, for make a machines automatic so what we need we need some uh, programs we need some instruction to give the patients uh, so for that uh, we need the programmable logic then along with the telecommunication because um, to run those systems uh, we need some kind of electricity some kind of uh, motors and lot of things so those connections are there and you uh, people only give the you know uh, the program and accordingly the system will come so this is the first stage of the robot and see it's, it was developed in 1960 to 1970 we are talking nowadays in never the robotics but if you see like mit and alls and uh, if you go for the uh, industry 3.0 history you will find the such kind of inventions and application in the industries and here uh, between 1890 why uh, these kind of technologies because development of these technologies normally came up from the in european countries usa so the those industries of those areas become very rich because they developed those kind of technology and automatically uh, they there you know uh, you no know, in between the 1960 and 1970 all tiers come to the market that's apple uh, previous version so such kind of companies came up so that is basically industry 3.0 so just see the changes so now next is the come to the i'll give some uh, photographs here so i know this you know what it is uh, this is basically uh, you know old a kind of camera hmm. Uh, those are called the uh, analog cameras so it's as a film and we click it so then there is a lot of process like after clicking of this uh, photographs you don't know how is it because then we have to send it uh, send it to some um, developing lab auto lab developer so they will develop it and then so it's total time of uh, clicking of a uh, photographs and getting the photographs it's take 15 to 20 days so then so people are not waiting for so many of times so then uh, nowadays this these cameras has been nowhere in the world it has been totally replaced by the digital camera where by a second you click it and get the photographs digitally so if you like it you can keep otherwise you can delete again you can uh, click it so see the way the systems are going to change then another example i'll show you this is the kind of keys so previously we have but now last one this is a remote control key no need to touch your car you just press the button and your car will be open right so see the uh, invention of the keys how these things so as per our requirement we have changed the technologies right so that's why the technology is going on so this is the you know first industrial revolution second then third the fourth fourth almost we have in the last era and we are entering the fifth because the 3d films have come up so those are basically the part of the augmented reality and virtual reality av and vr so there uh, now if you see some of the classrooms are going to you know um, virtually classrooms where student can sit and they can see those um, what the teaching teacher is saying so you can get the virtual reality of that like especially a history class if a teacher is uh, taking a lecture on the history automatically student can see a 3d views of that so that era we are going so means as the cost is very high that that's why everywhere every institutions are not going to add up but still people are working how to re reduce the cost so automatically that will be adopted like uh, even in 1970 the uh computer cost was very high uh, so people are not afforded that kind of you know uh, computer but now in the now nowadays the computer come to very cheap because the cost of those products are going down so that's why it is affordable by all so accordingly in industry 5.0 it is people are working to the people have developed already but they're working on the how to reduce the cost 
okay so once the cost will come up in a normal range so people will easily adopt it like all of you have i think uh, you have heard about the google glass so such kind of things are coming up and i think after 5 to 6 years you will easily get it all those things so this is the technology changes okay so and then the smart factories will come up so here are some of the examples like uh, especially uh, this altairs 8800 that is the first micro computer which came in 1971 and 1976 that's apple that stephen jobs and s ozanek they have developed this then autonomous machines and virtual environments came up in 1998 hmm. so these are the basic lab without them we cannot Uh, describe our technologies of internet of things that's why i have taken then auto id labs of mit basically those are the labs who have developed this then uh, 2000 the iot came internet of things 2010 cellular transport systems come up and 2020 autonomous interactions and virtualizations came up so um, because uh, these 2020 2021 so these uh, have uh, very very important years for our life because Uh, that's i have already told that we have changed uh, our lifestyle we are going to contactless so that's why you need the virtualization so that's why you know, we we have changed so 21st century so it is totally dependent upon the autonomous interactions and the virtualizations of the system like if we have a factory in pune i can operate it from delhi from mumbai from chennai anywhere in the india or anywhere of the world so that is our basic aim okay so but for that what we need so this is the industrial revolution so left side if you see this figure so this is the industrial revolution of the 1970 1960 so automation but right hand side if you see we have the server we have the cloud so the interactions between this because here the people are sitting they are putting the program here and then this system is running and we have lot of sensors here so those data which has been sensed that's again come up to this system we can uh, like we have a industry in you know chennai we are sitting in pune so our cloud means cloud is nothing that is a server uh, which is you know that is in delhi so the system uh, it is uh, from here the all this data has been stored here then we analyze it by the help of ai ml and then we find out the how the system is going on like if there is something wrong so definitely the system tell us yeah we are getting some problem so immediately in this from this system we get the notification we change the programming then our system is going well so these way we will monitoring the system virtually we don't go to the industry so that is basically the fourth industrial revolution concept so this is the visions and application of this like we have the you know technology we have the collaboration we have the processes like internet of things cloud plat platform big data as well as intelligence all technologies come up already we have the technology now this has been add on after that the collaboration come like ip centralization social innovations integrated industries all come up in a platform and then the processes like internet of services so later on i'll discuss more about that so basically this all come up in a one platform so that's that that's why this is coming up so then uh, the industry 4.0 that's already i have discussed so i am not going to that yes so this is another very important part so nowadays throughout the world this three part is very very important one is connected to the sensor like we have to put the different different kind of sensors and we have to take the data from that then the big data because if you put the sensors that will generate the data because that sensing data where what will do this so then we store it for somewhere and the data are coming in a two way some called the bad data that's we no need this is a good data which is required for us so here in this software we need such and such kind of technology that is basically ai ml technology by which we can segregate the data first and then we find out which data we need so that data we should put it in our system and then then after that it's give to the predictive analysis like uh, what is basically needed uh, like um, uh, i'll come up uh, a small example 
uh, like uh, nowadays all are habituated with the escalator right if you go to the mall or if you have your own society so there the lifts are there escalators are there right but thing is that sometime it's get damage then we face the problem but now i'll show you some of the example what people have done so by the help of these technology this they have put some sensors in the motor parts of the escalator so that they can you know what kind of heat is generating what kind of problems are getting they are observing that and then those data go to goes to the cloud continuously and they are there monitoring if any if any kind of you know uh, problem will generate if there is any uh, kind of variation is the data immediately they interact with the service people the, so they send the message to the service people and then that team will come up to the that particular area or particular machines and they uh, try to uh, find out the fault and there is a continuous like the so and they'll repair it so there is a no problem of uh, you know kind of uh, in continuous kind of problem so it is a continuous process so that is called the predictive analysis or the predictive maintenance so it's a huge area where you need so this is the basically uh, in present scenario scenario what you need you need the cloud you need the big data with collaboration real time analysis virtual networks all are there and here also another evolution is there in the how the data uh, storing of the data has been generated or uh, you know that uh, the how the data storing of the data has been changed the technology for storing of the data has been changed so you can see in the old age the people will store the data in the stone only so they will draw something uh, and there they will store the data like if you go to the ajanta ilara you can see so there the basically people have draw something but basically they have stored their data then after that some some uh, copper plates came where people people try to uh, uh, embrace their own you know kind of data so that that can store for somewhere then the paper came so people have written them then the book came up so people uh, uh, the publishers uh, typed it and then you know publish those book so that the data for stored for few years or the thousand of years so that anybody we want like in our research also if we need so first from where we'll start we'll start from the literature review so what is the meaning of the literature review so that means we'll first find out the related to the paper what people have done so that is basically the data storing systems will help us to learn something from others work so then uh, for storing of the data we uh, means people developed the floppy nowadays nowhere the floppy is available because uh, they have a very limited capacity is 144 kb and maximum to 256 kb not beyond of that then come to the cd came uh, that is also uh, now you know uh, obsolete so the cd has also around 1 mb 3 mb space and then come to the dvd which has a 1 gb 2 gb space then come to the pen drive that is a 64 gb 34 gb or 256 gb is area then hard disk came after that if nowadays if you want to purchase if you want to purchase one computer so they will give a virtual uh, memory with it right so that is called the cloud memory and they give you around 256 gb or around sometime 1 kb uh, 1 tb uh, cloud space to you for your lifetime so you can store your data there and whenever where are you like you are you are uh, giving your lecture right now like uh, in somewhere or you are working somewhere you need some data so no need to bring your laptop with you as you have purchased the cloud area so so there you can store it and you, you, by that internet you can download your documents anywhere no need to store in the data in the hard disks and all right so this way the technology are going to change right so these 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 without cloud only 10% of the data will stored but now on the cloud came 90% of the data are storing now on the cloud so these way people are uh, you know the technologies are going to in the cloud there are a lot of development is going on so how to compress the data so that it's 
minimum space it is required so a lot of technologies is coming up so now you see 2005 when people will go for a festival or if they they attended any festival so there they just go and attend it but nowadays everybody go there and click their photographs by the help of this digital cameras and also how the our technology means we are going to digital digitized so that that is the thing so step by step we are going to the digitize so this is the dis, digital uh, era and everything is going on the digitalizations right so just just i'll show you another example like how we are talking about the uh, users like if we if if we have any kind of technology you no know, so uh, if we bring any any product in the market so uh, what is our aim our aim to capture the customers right so see uh, how one product here lot of products i have given like this is a black and white tv then color tv then tape recorder then modem then your um, tab and uh, your uh, this mobile then when the facebook twitter uh, th these all are you know uh, kind of uh, platform which came up the digital platform these three so you see when the tv came so for getting a 50 million users it's is take 38 years hmm? then when this tape recorder came it's take 13 years to capture this 50 million users then modem came it's captured four years because step by step people are going to digitize then uh, mobile came uh, or tap came that's come three years to reach the 15 million users capacity then when this facebook twitter and this google came so it's take one year 1.75 and 1.25 years to capturing the 50 million users so just see if the whatever the product you are going to develop right so if it has a good market capturing capability so people will easily you know act it people people will easily adopt it right so that is the way we have so this is the you know wireless intelligence industry 4.0 smart clouds distributed manufacturing erp systems collaborative it solutions so all are there which we need so i'm not going to dip in this part so we have this benefits also outcome economy autonomous so the country which adopted industry 4.0 automatically their economy will go going up so economy going up means new technologies are being developed and that has been adopted by people so we have this operational operational efficiency in new product and services so lot of opportunity will come outcome economy autonomous school economy all are there right so now i am coming to the iot internet of things what it is because this is a today's topic because industry 4.0 without iot we not can, cannot means uh, survive so you can see this uh this this photographs so we have only one mobile and this is connected this mobile is connected with our every kind of uh equipments like our refrigerator our fridge uh, sorry a washing machine uh wifi camera or the camera which have then this bulb car music system home everything so all real time monitoring you can do or you can get through your mobile app so these mobile is nothing all the data uh, which are generating in those devices by the help of the sensors we are getting in our mobile in a very 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 uh, precious uh, way so actual what is going on so that part only we are getting so this is called the internet of things things means like devices it's maybe a car maybe a bulb maybe a camera maybe a you know um, washing machine maybe a refrigerator maybe a fan any devices when it's been operated through your mobile or any app uh, then we are saying that it is the internet of things that means your devices is connected through the internet right so that is a basic definition of the internet of things so the things that connected to the internet are projected to cross 20 millions in the near future so can you imagine like 
um, so that's why this is a huge area uh, every products are going to connected each you can see nowadays the if you see the ad in the uh, anywhere so internet connected car are available internet connected bulb are available and we are using the smart smart watch smart you know bulb smart fan smart refrigerator smart acs so all at the smart means what the real time data is going on there so that has been monitored by your app or the mobile so then the your system become a smart and it is a two way you can send your requirement through that and the system will give its requirement to you so both way it will interconnect it, right so that is basically internet of thing so it is a human versus machines and machine versus human two way sometime it's also machine to machine interactions like uh, we have a refrigerator and one robot is there so this robot is going to the refrigerator and then they open the door then they see what kind of inventory it has and then close the door and then the robot has a kind of you know app so like and that app is attached to the amazon so he, that robot observed that yes in our refrigerator less amount of milk are there so he immediately uh, that robot immediately you know put his uh, order to the amazon and the next day or the whatever the uh, any app and from there next day that milk came to our room uh, in our house the robot goes pick that uh, milk and put it inside of the refrigerator right so that is called machine to machine interactions through the internet and human to interaction means like you are sitting in a room want to um switch off the fan so if you have on off button in your mobile what will do you just click the off button so your fan will be stopped you don't have to move anywhere then you want to reduce the intensity of the bulb what you can do yes we have a technology by which we can slow down that intensity of the bulb then if you want to increase the bulb intensity you can so that is called the smart smart bulb technology okay so i am coming to those examples so what is the original of the terminology so i have told you like in the 2000 uh, that mit was first developed that and uh, this internet of things come out and it, it has been you know very old technology uh, and this internet of things it's communicate and sense or interact with the internal stuff state or the external environment so for internet of things we need these four part very very important one is the rfid what is this rfid is the uh, you know radio frequency uh, kind of thing so when uh, like if if we put this tag in somewhere and another part is there so when this system is going near to that so these can be read it and it can like it, we can uh, by the help of the rfid tag what we can do we can uh, operate our entry and exits of any kind of uh, system like if you have a building and it's a gate you make it uh, automatic so you put a rfid tag on that system so which are coming inside and another uh, that part will put on to that device which is going to enter when it will be entered so if that frequency will match it will be open otherwise not so this way this rfid will work then the nano technology because yes we need because we need the nano sensors very i'll discuss later on the smart dust so basically that is a kind of sensors which we can it's like a, a very small chip which we can put uh, with the air and it goes inside of a system it can capture the photographs inside and then from that we can analyze the systems inside like where the people will not enter so there we will use this smart dust technology with the iot so uh, then come to the sensors so without the sensors uh, this iot cannot sustain because everything like if any system you want to make it smart to make it uh, connected to the internet so what we need we need uh, these different kind of sensors like humidity sensors we have this uh, ultrasound sensors lot of sensors are there 
which are available uh, in the uh, market. So these first you should learn about the sensors and then only you can apply it. Then the sensors are sensing the data. The next part is a transducer. So that data should convert into the electrical or the electromagnetic waves and then that goes to the internet. So transducer are there. And then when uh, the data came back, so then we need some operations so the, there we need the actuators. So that is the part we need the sensor, transducer, actuators, devices, and also main important part is the smart networking. Like we have different kind of networking for interconnect. Yes, we have the Wi-Fi system, we have the Bluetooth, then we have this LoRa band, we have the Zigbee, and many more. So uh, as per our requirement, we put this network system, uh, and then we connect these devices with that, and accordingly we'll play with this. Okay, so uh, these all are very, very important for IoT point of view. And then the characteristics like efficiency, scalable, associate architectures, unambiguous naming addressing. So there are a lot of things is there. I cannot go to very, very deep because we, then we have to go to the MQTT and all part. So then this is the IoT basically. So Internet of Things where we can go, we have the home automations, so we have the appliances, we have the home monitoring system, we have the phones, wearables, TVs, manufacturing, sales, everywhere. So next I can show you. So this is the present market scenario. So 40% uh, of internet of things market has been captured by manufacturing industry. So there people are using a lot because manufacturing industries, big industries, they have a huge uh, capital and so they have scope uh, to invest in you know a research research area so they have already invested so and they they that's why uh, 40 to 40 to 45 percent of manufacturing industries they have um, adopted this iot technology so huge scope is there then the healthcare healthcare means i am coming that part also like uh, as you know, uh, remote monitoring systems is required for healthcare uh, areas. So we have like a very, very present example I can give you. That's my app is there, no, by which we can go through the COVID test. So see, these a small, uh, you know, kind of sensor is there and you have to put one drop of your blood and your blood count and everything has been detected by that sensor and the data will goes to the wave and from there the all uh, your uh, blood sample data that you can see in your mobile phone so that is a basic example of uh, this internet of things used in the healthcare many more are there uh, Shanil sir will also uh, discuss on those points then the retail amazon flipkart all have come up to the market what you have to do you just check the requirement in the mobile and you give the order you don't have to go to the anywhere so from your mobile you can give the order and then the order placed and next day or after giving a certain time that product come to your house that has been delivered so the retail we need many uh, because only only eight to ten percent market uh, right now has been captured so a lot of you know areas are available where we can go for the retail kind of things, especially after COVID, uh, you know, uh, law in education areas. So a lot of online courses have come up like Coursera, EduX, then uh, many more, even this NPTEL, SWAM courses, many more courses have come up. Plus a lot of virtual others companies has come up also, and they're giving you very good kind of courses to offer to you. So that's a very big market is going to create nowadays. Even after 10 years, you can see 50% students uh, means uh, like if a student is going to graduate, no? So 50% credit of him will be teaching by uh, virtual uh, platforms and 50% will be offline. So that is the way we are going. So that like the whatever the teacher is teaching in the MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology, you can you can access that part. So if you require, you can join their course. You can so that is that is a big platform for virtuality, and uh, there the people are try to you know makes the virtual uh, reality or the augmented reality with this 
uh, online teaching platform so that you, you don't have to go to the lab. Hmm. You can get your lab in your home. So that is the way the market means people are working and very soon, very soon that kind of technology will come up. So huge area there for people who are going for a new entrepreneur. So a lot of developments are there and the security. Still very uh, few part of the world has been secured by the help of the internet. So the security areas, like it's maybe a home security or maybe a society security, maybe your office security. So everywhere, the security is going to, uh, you know, uh, smart very soon. So only 7%, 7 to 8% uh, market of security has been converted into smart. So huge area available where you can think uh, to uh, this area. So, so, so you can go for a, as an entrepreneur, right? So here is the IoT for healthcare. So this is the, how the retail is going to like, uh, this is a concept. Like if you go in any any shop, so there uh, it's a you know big uh, kind of uh, shop like any kind of mart or big bazaar whatever. So you don't have to touch the uh, product. If you have a mobile, so it, if just scan those product and the cost of that product you can get it along with that what is the offer is going on, right? So even you don't have to go to the that um, shop. From your mobile, you can get a virtual reality of that shop. Like a theme will be there just you are entering. And then like each and every rack, you'll go virtually. And there you get the what is the offer is going on. And then you can click on that. So your order will be placed. And next day you'll get the deliver. So that is the way the retail retail things is going to change right so huge huge uh, thing is there then in the manufacturing so you can see everything um, is operating through your mobile and or the tab and you are getting the real time uh, kind of information from the machineries hmm. in the healthcare also like you know what is the condition of the body what is the your blood sugar what is the pressure uh, every everything can be monitored remotely uh, by the help of this uh, IoT healthcare units. So this is the huge, huge area where the you know things is there. Then this is a smartphone. So these are the four area where uh, you know we, sh we should think. So security means biometrical and the facial recognition lock, remote sensor. So you can see this biologic biometric and the facial recognition locks are available nowadays. The cost is around twelve thousand to fifteen thousand. So that's why people are not uh, using uh, very frequently that. But if it's come around 1000 to 2000 rupees, so definitely people can think. So that is a good area. I'll show you later some of the mm, things. So this is the present scenario. Now you can see how uh, that, that graph is increasing. So uh, very soon, very soon, this IoT will, will cover all of the over, uh, world market in different, different areas. So, and this is the way how the people are going to, uh, you know, uh, adopt this technology. So there is a very good slide is means blog is there. Uh, so that is the analytics vidha.com. So YouTube videos are there. So we don't have the time right now. So I can show you uh, how the uh, these these examples are they, they are, uh, you know, uh, explaining very good way with the YouTube videos. Mm, so you can get this idea like smart appliances, smart energy meters, wearable devices like smart watch, then this uh, uh, different kind of uh, like Bluetooth speaker, then Bluetooth headphones. So there's wearable devices are there and then connected cards like smart cards are there, then smart healthcare devices. So that is there, how the market is going on. So this is some application. So first is this ATM, automatic teller machine. Uh, that, that was the first I to develop things. So why it is IoT interacted? Because if you if you get the money or if you you know uh, if you uh, uh, withdraw the money from the ATM machine, so immediately you get the uh, that um, some messages you'll get it right. So that is the first things. Then wave application, then smart meters. So this is a meter. 
so meter uh, like it's maybe water meter or maybe you know uh, electric meters or the solar meters so no need to put this kind of meters the meter is in your mobile so whatever the monthly bill will generate you can see it here with your unit and all so no need to go to there so and from here you can directly um, pay the amount so that is the concept of the smart meters then digital lock so this is the concept of the digital lock so you just bring your mobile scan it so if it will be match with your face recognition with this so automatic door will be open or not so and there will be some security key you can put password you can put so if, if you get it or uh, your um, thumb impression you can give it so if it will match so then only uh, this lock will be open this is the concept of the smart dust so see the nano chip so which we can uh, flow inside of the system so here is smart healthcare smart vehicle and then that goes to the inside of the machineries or inside of the areas where like you know anywhere to measure the chemicals in the soils or diagnose the problems in the human bodies like um, if uh, some uh, photographs you need of some pancreas because the pancreas is an area which is very uh, you know uh, we cannot get the uh, ultrasound or any other technology you know we cannot get the actual photographs of the pancreas so how we can get so we normally put uh, these microchips through a capsule it goes there and it take the inside uh, photographs and then come out so such kind of technologies are going on then the smart vehicles so vehicles is connected with surrounding so here you can get uh, the you know pop up like where is the nearest uh, parking is available or what is the condition of the roads everything you can get it then if any emergency will come so surroundings uh, you can get the immediate assistance from somewhere so that is the concept of the smart vehicles smart city a uh, huge like there this everything is there the smart cities concept uh, so i think you know so i'm not going to there but then uh, uh, smart parking like uh, here is the concept of the smart parking so uh, where the place is available so you can get it in your mobile on your display of the car and then uh, that somebody will assist you how to go to that place and you can so through the you know, uh through that uh, uh, your connectivity you can you can get it then structural health like if a structure is there it's maybe a building so what is the condition of that is if inside any crack will develop so can you get it so that's a modern days iot application then noise urban maps then smartphone detection like if you, your smartphone has been stolen so it is easily we can detect it where it is then traffic congestions smart lighting so we can control the intensity of the bulb from our mobile here it is waste management like this is the uh, smart dustbin concept so like uh, if we put your garbage is here so it will be segregate first and then uh, it will signal you like uh, what is the condition like uh, not you uh, uh, it uh, like in a society uh, if we put this smart waste garbage so the society's garbage will collected there when the garbage will be filled automatically uh, the municipalities of that society where it is so they will notify it that this dustbin has been filled by the garbage so their car will come and they will collect it so that will wastage uh, you know of um, petrol consumption so the diesel consumptions because every day it will not come and also um, it will be segregated automatically so that is a smart waste bin concept then smart roads roads are connected by internet so if any kind of difficulty any kind of emergency occurred immediately on road assistance will come up it's maybe related to the you know car problems uh, technical problems or any emergency like any car collisions has been happened so Uh, nearest police station nearest hospitals will get the notification so if this pune mumbai highway is very soon is will be a smart roads because people are working on this then river floods conditions like if the rivers 
water level uh, will going to increase so immediately the surrounding peoples will get the notification and they'll act then smart grid like use of the electricity then tank level photovoltaic installations water flow so all are there then modern day iot application like forest fire detections air pollution snow level monitoring landslides uh, then earthquake yes avalanche prevention is very very important because we have seen in indian army uh, sometimes they have uh, got some, some kind of emergency in especially the people or uh, soldiers who are uh, staying in high altitude areas like ladakh and others uh, this glaciers regions earthquake early detections water leakage radiation levels explosive and hazardous gases supply chain controls nfc payment intelligence shopping applications smart so all are there in the modern day iot applications so people are working so huge areas are available where people can think people can work so basically now what is the sensors the trillion sensors we need smart systems billions applications millions so this is the way how the iot is going on and iot enables like implementations connectivity yes i am talking the zigbee rfid lora these are the you know network we need as per our requirement like if you are going for the smart road so at least 35 km you have to cover so there the bluetooth or wifi will not work so we need something like zigbee or lora long range network then if you are working for a, a small home uh, so there the bluetooth is perfect for that or a small society rfid is good for that so lot of you know connectivities are available so we have to find out which connectivity we need which network we need accordingly we have to uh, connected this systems because this is the implementation part and this is the our connectivity and this is the enabling technologies like ai ml should be there because the data which will be generated which will be transferred so we have to analyze that so that's why these uh, ai ml part will come up so this way we have to enable this iot so uh, this is the basic technologies like connecting layers the service then local connectivity global connectivity internet so these way it will work and baseline technology like machine to machine communication cyber physical systems web of technologies all are there so there are the few of the examples like how these like, cities are there so i think uh, uh, i have discussed lot because these are the you know some of the uh, systems where like this is a bottling plant and rfid we have put it so uh, the system will work you know automatically and which kind of um, liquid is required so that is the way is there then this is the operational efficiency of the water management of you know uk so they have made this uh, system iot enable so that the they have a zero uh, you know kind of problems they have faced so then this is another uh, what predictive maintenance that's already have discussed regarding the uh, this um, excavator then Uh, operation if if efficiency of the air bus so they have used so these are the some of the case studies so in 2014 this uh, a380 so there people have done then another one uh, case study is there there is augmented reality so uh, online uh, on road assist like if you get any problem on the road so if you have such kind of system uh, you can get the diagram so these these di diagrams will goes to the service center and they'll assist you how to so this they this things already has been developed by voxwagon and they have implemented it in their systems this is called augmented reality based service in system so see the technology is there then this is another general electric motors they have developed this plant um, so these wind turbines has been monitored by iot based systems so that if there is be any 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 problem with that so you can see the uh, 5 to 20% growth of renewable energy has been uh, developed Uh, sorry increased then this is another examples of royal royals provides a range of services so 92% of the trench engineers have been total care so the total care of the systems has been uh, monitored by the iot based so and this is the result then automators pool economy so this plant has been developed by the 3d printed so the technology uh, see without the man that plant has been developed and the quality is very good then this is a pipelines and that has been monitored by iot based sensors so that if there is any leakage so immediately the systems um, will be safe so that uh, you know the leakage cost of the industries has been reduced so next uh, i have done my part just a minute
because i have i think uh, i have taken a lot of time okay so now um, yeah. i'll request uh, shanil sir to take over the next yes, sir. yeah yeah yes sir so i am sharing the screen so what to shanil sir sir so i have uh, taken a lot of time so over to shanil sir sir and then i will take some question it is okay yes sir so good evening everyone uh, already sir has discussed a lot about uh, very iot fundamentals iot concepts and all and now i'll try to highlight more about the applications right so i'll try to talk more technically as well as entrepreneurial way right so that is the main reason the session is there uh, before i talk about some applications uh, we'll try to recall some of the things sir has already discussed so i'll try to talk more practically i'll try to play some videos right so that uh, the same concept will be clear and then we can take it forward right so the main reason why we are talking about iot so sir has discussed a lot about you now various applications all over the world but what is the main reason that suddenly this iot has become very big so if we compare now as we are in 2022 right and if we compare 2003 so 10 years back 10 15 years back if we go back then our actual internet usage was very less so in a particular home only two to three internet devices were there and nowadays if you remember everybody has two smartphones right one laptop at least one tablet and then there is alexa google home and that different gadgets are there at home so average family uh, if i talk about one person then per person internet connectivity requirement is 7 to 8 which was only two or three right before 10 years so that is also one of the reason that iot is now becoming a very big field because everywhere connectivity is only possible via internet because there is no other option there are technologies like sir talk about lora right so so lora one gateway can cover 25 to 30 kilometers in particular region but that is under research and still lot of work is pending so it will take 5 to 6 years it will come to india so currently the option we have is internet only and as per very uh, well known company called cisco right by 2020 so we are in 2022 currently 50 billion devices are connected to internet right so so many devices are already connected to internet and now we can see almost uh, doubling this figure day by day right so before i go forward i like to play some videos so actually you uh, know before going to classroom what i try to do is i try to implement the same technology myself so that right i can tell the you uh, know i can share my knowledge with students and sometimes what happens that we have a very good idea so if i talk of entrepreneur point of view sometimes you have terrific idea and you think that if i merge this technology with this right then this will be very successful so definitely there is one marketing aspect but there is one more thing is technical aspect so sometimes if you are not aware of something right for example uh, if i think that now currently google home alexa and you know, all this uh, devices are available so if i try to put a new device in the market it will not work but for that first first thing is we need to understand right how it is working and then try to understand the technicality and find the limitation and then try to come up with a new device right so that is how i try to work on different things myself and dr anuban actually we work together on so many projects together right so what i'll do is uh, i'll play some videos right and first you need to tell me that can we say that this particular thing is iot or not right so let's clear that concept first and then we'll move to more applications right so let me know in case uh, if it's not audible good morning everyone today we are going to see a live demo of home, home automation system so before we go further what i'll do i'll give you a quick introduction of the circuit board design so let's start with one of the circuit in black that is called arduino board basically this circuit is connected with one more circuit as you can see here that is a bluetooth adapter so what we are going to do using bluetooth we are going to control home appliances now this arduino circuit is connected with one switch board or that is known as relay board now the main function of relay board is it will alternate our power so if the power is on it will make it off if it is off it will make it on now that relay board is directly connected with the switch board as you can see now what what is our aim like we wanted to use mobile to operate home appliances and on the other hand we also want to use switch to operate home appliances that's why we did some wiring arrangement and circuit design as you can see here now currently we are connected only one slot that is a fan 
now what i'm going to do now we have designed one android app now using this app i'm going to control the fan as you can see on the ceiling and as you can see currently it is off but as soon as i'll send signal to this relay board this fan will switch on so this is our android app as you can see and now i'll pass the signal and as you can see the fan is right so one means on here and zero means off here now it will take some time because the signal is received by this relay board and the relay board is sending signal to our original switch board now we'll do the same experiment but we'll switch it off so let's do it again as you can see here i'll send the signal and see in the real time the fan is off same process we can do it again let's switch the phone on fan on as you can see and very quickly in the same screen as you can see that's it and the phone is fan is off Thank you very much. Uh, that's it for today. You can right. So uh, can we say this IoT? So let's make it more interactive, right? So that we can clear the concepts and we can learn some applications also. Um, uh, students can post their responses yeah, sure. in the yeah, chat yeah. box or uh, the Q and A part. Sure, sure ma'am. And if uh, if you can help me, if uh, I can see here, I think. I think students uh, have taken that advice that we will uh, have questions towards the end. So, so okay. uh, the reason I, I'm showing this video, so I want to discuss all the applications, technical as well as management, as well as entrepreneurship point of view. Now, uh, obviously, now this thing, as I told you, it's very important to understand that how that thing is working. Now, there are two reasons for that. One thing is to understand the technicality. So even though someone is starting a business in particular domain, if basic knowledge, technical knowledge is not there, that's, there is a possibility of failure. Second thing is, uh, can anyone tell me, let's say, uh, what is the cost of home automation? This application is called home automation, right? So per room, most of the companies currently, they're charging around 30 to 60,000 per room. And I, I can tell you, uh, this actually I did myself, the cost is 1,500 rupees in total, right? You may talk about fabrication or, so total may go up to seven to 8,000. So seven to 8,000 product is being sold in, 30 to 60,000 because people are not aware of the technology, right? So uh, it's a very competitive market. Already more than 100 companies are there in the field of home automation, right? So, but it's sometimes very important to understand the technical side of the same thing also, right? After that, I, I thought that uh, like why I need to use a mobile app, right? To operate a particular plan. So this is almost 10 year old video actually when I started learning about IoT and all. And then I thought that why it cannot happen that now every day I need to switch on particular fan, tube light, AC and all. So when I walk in the room automatically, a plan should be on. When I just walk up, it should be off. Right. So second work actually I did on that. Right. And ma'am, only one answer people, anybody can answer. Can I say this is IoT or not? Because that concept is very important to be clear. If anybody can, anybody can even write in the chat. Yes, I think right. uh, I can see a few chats coming, sir. Yeah. Uh, you can Thank see you the see chat. So we have uh, no. a couple of... Yeah, so one said yes. And other two, two, yeah. two, two are saying no. So why no? Uh, if, yeah, they are not allowed to unmute, right? So they cannot speak. Not, okay. They cannot okay. unmute, but they can write if they want. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so Sovit, can you tell me why no? Yeah, in, in a single lineup. Yeah. Not connected to internet. Let's say if it is connected to internet, then yeah. So so I'll answer it little later. So let me play another video, right? And again, you uh, tell me the same answer, right? So I'll come to you again. Right. So second thing I thought that when I just walk in the room automatically, certain appliance should be on, right? And when I just walk off, it should be off. Right, so I'll just quickly play the video. So initial part is the introduction. So I'll just try to skip the introduction and we'll just move on. 
application. Yes, and automatically. Yeah, so as you can see, my room, walking in. And as you can see, my room has already started. And now, if I just walk off in my room, I will see that different appliances in my room is automatically getting closed. Right? Now let me do it again. I'm again coming back, and if you see that automatically, based on the motion, bulb, fan, and light is automatically start. You can see that bulb is blinking actually because it just toggles the power, but rest of things will remain as it is. So this is my today's demonstration. So as you already know that I have a dream of building my own smart home. Right. So uh, now, Sobit again, same question to you now. Now it's connected to internet. I have used a sensor called PIR. So, which can detect motion, right? So, it is detecting my motion and accordingly it is working. So, it's IoT, you are telling. Okay. So, uh, it's very important that so I'm discussing this, that anything that is connected to internet is not IoT. So, there are some rules uh, to be followed, then only that product can be called IoT, right? So, so many companies are there in the market, uh, they are actually cheating people, right? telling or selling that product as IoT, right? So, Actually, the IoT technology is previously known as wireless sensor networks, and before that, it was computer networks, right? So, all the companies keep on bringing new buzzwords to sell the products, just like uh, this 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. We call it that is also buzzword, right? But today we cannot discuss because we are not uh, talking on that. But actually, that is also buzzword. So there is some technicality, and even in advertisement, what they try to show is they try to show the technique, actually uh, technology behind that. But sometimes we look at the characters and we look at the story, but we don't actually understand the technology that particular company is trying to show us. So that is actually what happens. And they try to bring different buzzwords. They try to throw on our mind and everywhere so that we start thinking about buying that thing, right? That is what happens. And that is where AI has now become a very big thing because now if you remember, you just search some watch watches on Google and suddenly you'll see in two minutes that you're getting notification, even of the same brand that you actually search. Right, so that is how good these technologies are that actually takes care. So they try to right, uh, influence your mind so that you buy that product and you they, they force you to buy that product. That is a very big thing about it, right? So the question is anything that is connected to internet, whether we are talking about sensors or controllers or, or different project examples actually Dr. Anirban gave, but that is not IoT. Right, so there are some rules to be followed. Uh, I'll discuss one practical example also later. There are different technologies are there. So uh, if I talk about techn technicality of this home automation, uh, if you remember a phone, so I'm using a mobile app, right? To control a fan, right? So if everybody agree with me, both are machines, right? A mobile is a smartphone is also a machine, fan is also a machine. So it is called M2M, -M, machine to machine communication. It is not IoT. But so many companies actually they sell their products by telling it IoT, right? Because they think that layman may not understand. That's why they try to give different names, but that is not true. There is M to M, right? There is something called Internet of Everything. So many buzzwords are there, but this is wrong. There is no technology called Internet of Everything. It's not possible to connect everything to Internet, right? Because there are some rules. It requires Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or different kind of functionalities. Now, let's say uh, the lease lines we get at home, like broadband connection. That is not IoT, right? That is just industrial kind of Internet, where on a dedicated line, you are getting the Internet. And let's say only sensors are connected to Internet. That is called wave of things. That is again not IoT, but subset of IoT, right? So these are the various technologies that is around IoT and that is being used entrepreneurship way and they try to sell the products. So it's very important to know that now what is the actual significance of particular technology. So now after discussing this theory part, what I'll do is again, I'll play one video and you again now I want to see that this concept is clear or not. And then I'll take one practical example on that, right? So uh, one more example I'll take. Yeah, so let me discuss the theory first and then we'll uh, talk about it. So basically, there are some rules to tell uh, this product is IoT or not. So let's say if there are sensors connected, right? So sensors sense data from the surrounding environment. Now, those sensors are independent, right? So it is placed somewhere. There is no surveillance there, right? And that is doing some computation and storing data on some server. And third thing is, if it is actionable. Now, you might say that I'm controlling a fan and tube light using, using mobile app. Or using my motion so there is iot involved right because i'm telling that the principle is actionable but here actionable means very different right so basically six things should be part of a particular product then only we can call it out so let's say if sensors are there right and you're storing whatever information is coming right on some server 
then the raw information that you captured that you are storing that is not iot when you convert raw information into some intelligent form that becomes iot let me give an example if a temperature sensor is connected in my room right now right that will give me temperature and humidity right but your end user is not interested in that end user wants to know using this that what kind of weather is right now so weather is sunny weather is rainy there is a possibility of thunderstorm right so this kind of information intelligent information we want so when raw information is converted into intelligent form it becomes iot right i'll show a practical example of that also right so after you analyze this raw information then only it becomes intelligent and when we share via some web or mobile app so web interface or any mobile interface if that is used then it becomes iot right so i'll show that practical example and then i'll play one video and you have to tell me that it's iot or not right so there is a portal government portal called aqi.in so aqi means air quality index right so air quality index now what this portal does is it will actually tell us real time air quality index so currently i am in pune right and you can see this portal shows me real time air quality index 97 now from where it is coming so these are six different sensors are connected all over india so all over india different parts this is real time project right so different sensors are connected in iot language it is called a station or it is called sensing unit right a controller and sensor together is called station so there are different stations are connected all over india you can see and currently it is showing me so based on this data that is gathered by sensors this raw data was used to classify this with respect to air pollution so that means classify this data to tell us what is the aqi value of pune so pune aqi value right now aqi index is 97 right and it is classified as moderate air pollution in pune getting everyone so when raw information is converted into intelligent form it becomes iot and then using this web interface you are seeing this live now it's a very big project that i'm talking right now you can even see the pollution of various countries of the world so if you click on dashboard here it will take you to various countries pollution also so you can see pollution index of canada 15 denmark 41 right argentina 83 and so many right so you can see most of the countries of the world there are 350 countries are there in the world us 20 right so it's a very big project government started and our citizens are connected to various countries of the world right so this is actual iot so iot theoretically looks very simple but practically it's a very large concept so this is the example of that right so when you think of some idea for example this then you need to first know the limitation of that system right then only you can think of new idea entrepreneurship i'm talking now let's a technical that's why some technical understanding is required so i'll give my own example that from this i try to find the limitation and i worked on another system so this portal can give you real time air quality index right now i'm sure that so many of you have used this portal called accuweather right so accuweather actually gives you weather updates so let's say if you want to plan a trip to goa after two days you can actually see the weather in advance right after a week also you want to do something you can see from here but this portal has limitation that you cannot see air pollution for day after tomorrow of tomorrow after week or after month right now currently we are talking about pandemic but this is a very big issue right if you take example of delhi then air quality index was crossing 500 1000 even right so it's a very very big concern and that is we'll see now after 6 months once this covid is over we are going to move to this environment monitoring thing because air pollution is a very big concern right now in most of the cities right so here this port also shows the rank of this right so it shows the rank of pune as well as different cities of the world right so you can see bangalore india air quality index is 558 it's very so it's very unhealthy right there is a city called kolar and uh, in gujarat wapi it's around about 300 right so you can see it compares various data of all the countries of the world as well as city right so these country rankings if i click here right so various countries are there and somewhere india is on the seventh position as far as air pollution is concerned but the limitation is i told you this portal cannot give you cannot predict pollution for you right so I actually i worked on this project and i published a research paper you can find more details there if you search air pollution prediction right and if you just write my name and you will find a publication uh, in a journal called sensors right so it's a well known journal uh, in the area of iot it is actually in the world it's top 5 in the world right so 
you can see uh, some students walk with me so how to predict pollution so we build a portal called pollution weather which can give you pollution for tomorrow day after tomorrow or after week right so it's very important to know the limitation of existing system so that you can come up with a new system right so this technical point of view as well as entrepreneurship point of view that you need to know some details so that you can put up a new idea right so sometimes we say that uh, no, a big idea is as good as a business but sometimes it's important to know the insights into that right or sometimes we need to hire a person domain expert in that so that we can come to know this right so this is just an example of actual iot when we say raw information is converted into intelligent form right now what i'll do is uh, i'll play one video i need to tell me uh, now this concept is clear or not i want to know so i'll play one video and you have to tell me that this is iot or not right and then uh, i'll tell you some story behind this thing i worked on so in summer in some of the cities in india what happens it's very hot outside right so i had an idea that uh, sitting at home by wi fi why i cannot just start my car and now you know you can say that tesla google all these companies have already developed auto cars right and it has all these facilities but in india we still drive 70% people drive manual cars so 70% people is around 100 crore cars are still manual and now we are talking about electric cars already dr anirban discussed that concept it will take 10 years time right coming into india and various countries so still we have manual cars and how to find solution for that right so my idea was using wifi on to start the car right and uh, i'll switch on the car or switch on ac and after 15 minutes i'll go to my car right and then i'll uh, car is cold already and i can take the car up, right so this is one of the patent actually uh, that i have done on this so i'll play the video right and then you can tell me this is iot or not that is very important so give me a minute close to the circuit you can see that blue light is blinking that says that the power of the car is on and the features that actually requires power sorry yeah close to the circuit you can see that blue light is blinking So actually, that says that the power of the car is on, and the features that actually requires power now can be operated. Yeah. So, so that's about the music player. Similarly, I can switch on the air condition of the car. So right now we cannot really feel, but if I click the air condition, so and the car has started becoming cold. So as you can see, the AC of the car has started working, and if you see here, my hair is. little bit moving because of the air of the car so that's about the power feature of the car that is air condition now next thing what actually we can do we can actually operate the whole car basically we can start the car using the power the so same way so what i need to do is the already the power is on so i can actually start the car so we can here so car is actually started and do not make a mistake we have put it the car in neutral if it is in the first gear car will start moving also so it has happened when we were actually experimenting it should not happen when you are actually trying so that's why i always repeat do not try it at home without an expert okay so we are done with the starting the car also i'll keep the car on for the noise you can hear and now next thing what i'll do i'll switch on the car horn so if i raise the button of the car is actually on so this all features actually require power so the last thing i want to show you there yeah, two more things remaining so i'm going to show you how we can actually operate the window of the car and how we can actually operate the headlight of the car so both of these will see so i'll show you the power window feature so you can see the window is starting to move it's about one window similarly we can actually control all the windows of the car like this and the last thing what i want to show is we will operate the headlight of the car so let's say we are in the dark and actually we need to use the light of the car for some reason so we can use it so next thing what i'll show is operating the
right so now uh, again the same question so students can you help me uh, yeah can i say it's iot or not yes yeah, so shobit now tell me or anyone else so it's iot or not it's iot okay so again actually everyone is making the same mistake right again my mobile phone is a machine car is a machine right a machine is interacting with other machine right so here we are not analyzing this data and we are converting it to some intelligent form simply i am giving one and zero and this car is getting operated that's why it's not iot it is m to m only right now i'll play actual video of iot so that you can understand and again this is entrepreneurship point of view it's a good product and you can take this idea forward also so i'll quickly play the video the technology at our fingertips can help us do amazing things it can help us navigate the world know which restaurant to book tonight or know what song is playing on the radio but when it comes to the actual stuff around us if you're not sure or just don't know well you're on your own sio is the first molecular sensor that fits in the palm of your hand it scans the molecular fingerprint of an object and provides relevant instant information about its chemical makeup you can use it to log the chemical fingerprint record it then share it with your friends imagine if there was a way to know which watermelon is sweeter when is that avocado going to ripen how many calories carbs or proteins are in that shake how your plants are doing what's in those pills you were taking imagine if there was a way to know the chemical makeup of everything you come in contact with the applications are endless Sio uses a tiny optical sensor called a spectrometer which absorbs light reflected back from an object and breaks it down into a spectrum. The spectrum is then sent to our cloud for analysis and our algorithm sends back the result to your phone in real time. Spectrometers are used today in labs around the world, but they are too large and expensive for everyday use. Sio is a tiny spectrometer that can be mass produced at low cost. What's exciting about Sio is that it empowers us all to explore new frontiers right under our noses. You don't have to be a scientist. You just have to follow your curiosity. And every time you scan, you're helping to build the world's first database of matter that has tremendous implications for research, for medicine, for education, for our food system, and for our environment. You can also get our development kit and build applications of your own join the journey get your own sile explore more right so actually this product is already available uh, you can buy this the cost is only 100 dollars so less than a smartphone cost you can actually buy this product right so it's very good idea that now just you can use optical ray and you can come to know the life of a particular product whether it's a car tire whether it's a fruit vegetable even uh, you could put it on cheese medicine and it will tell you exactly some more information about it the carbs and uh, fat and everything right so basically what is iot is right when sensors are there which captures data right via internet we send when we analyze this data and convert it to some intelligent form right so when four layers are there physical network then information and application then it becomes iot right so very very important concept uh, right to go for now this air pollution as i told you so i worked on a system called air pollution prediction right so before that what i had to do was uh, because the air pollution index we are seeing that is outside right but i wanted to compare the what is there inside my house so actually i connected this pollution station inside my bedroom actually right so just to capture that what is the indoor pollution and then i put another one at my terrace so that i can come to know so actually this project myself and dr anil work together so we capture this data right so that we can compare that what is the difference between indoor and outdoor pollution and based on using this data what we did we applied artificial intelligence here so whatever data i gathered right i gave it to machine learning algorithm then machine learning algorithm gave me prediction based on time step right so this was the architecture i proposed that once data was gathered i store that on cloud platform that is google firebase right like google drive there is something called google firebase right so i stored data there and then there i apply machine learning right we together and then we actually predict the pollution index just like we predict just like you can go to acu weather you can see weather for tomorrow likewise we actually worked on pollution for tomorrow 
right? So that accordingly we can plan our trip. So this portal we develop. So you select a particular date and it will show you all the pollution values. So all the sensor values as well as EQ index value, right? So we develop this app also as well as web interface also, right? And you can read more about this, uh, right? If you just search air pollution prediction and my name, and you can actually read more about this, right? So this is how you find the limitation of existing system and you try to come up with your entrepreneurship idea. Yeah. Another project I want to talk about, uh, it's little research related to research, but uh, as uh, ma'am talked about DRDO, so I thought that let me discuss this thing. So actually I got a grant of 16 lakhs from DRD. Now, what exactly I'm working on? So if you recall this particular photo, right? Uh, she's actually eminent scientist. She was there actually, Kalpana Chawla. Right now, this photo, I'm sure everyone remembers in the house, right? That what happened and all. So what we thought that, uh, what can be done? I mean, so currently I'm working with a technical team of DRDO and we're, we are trying to do something so that this kind of accident can be protected in the future. Now, what happened at that time, when spaceship comes back, right? Uh, in the earth atmosphere, it generates the friction. And because of friction, a lot of radiation gets generated. Radiation is energy, right? And energy gets sprayed. And what happened? All the tiles came out, right? Because, because of that reaction, that process is called pyrolysis. And because of that, all the tiles came out, right? We have studied this in 12, uh, some of you, uh, if science background is there. Others, I'll tell you basically, there is a friction happens that because of friction, this incident actually happened. Now, we cannot go to space, right? And taste this kind of spaceship. It is impossible, right? Because there is no gravitation force there. So what we thought that, uh, what if we apply here some kind of multitasking or parallel computing, it is called in engineering language and using, so I'm using Python language for this. And what we're trying to do is if we can come to know what kind of gases and solids are getting generated when this happened, right? And based on that data, if we can build smart material in India. Now in NASA, right, in USA, this facility is there, in India, it is not there. Right. So what we're trying to build is we're trying to build smart material based on this, based on these inputs so that we can build spaceship, which will, which can actually provide you resistance against this kind of accidents. Right. So for that, uh, now supercomputer, I need to do this kind of computation. Now supercomputer cost you 16 crore, right. And that much fund is not, we don't have. And the grant I got is only 15 lakhs. So what I'm doing here is if you know Raspberry Pi, there are different controllers available, right, for IoT like Arduino. So this is Raspberry Pi. So I'm trying to build a super computer using Raspberry Pi. So it is called master and slave kind of device. So this computer will cost you very less. It is, it is almost, I can tell you that one fifteenth cost of the actual computer, right? So using this cost, I can build this computer and this computer is as good as uh, the super computer, which can do the similar kind of computation so that we can come to know what kind of solid and gases are getting generated. So we can build that smart material. And we can build a testing facility at DRDO, right? So that uh, in future, this kind of accident can be protected, right? So that was the idea that how IoT can be applied research point of view. Again, uh, here also, we can think of some entrepreneurship point of view ideas. Like, you know, people are now talking about drones and attacking drones and all, right? Now, another example, actually, we try to implement at our institute itself. So last year, there was lockdown. And we thought that now how to protect our people because so many people are coming from outside and how to disinfect them from infections. So we build actually our own smart sanitizer term, right? So we actually created a product and we install it at Symbiosis. So whenever uh, you're welcome to visit Symbiosis and whenever you visit, we'll show you the live demo of this also. That's all quickly uh, yeah, play a video. So what happens here is there is a water tank connected here and there is sanit sanitizer kind of like liquid is inside, right? So there are nozzles here, which captures this liquid from here, like a fountain or water sprinkler, right? And it starts spraying your you for 10 seconds, right? So once you enter here, there is a ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensor means it captures the motion, right? So once you enter, that captures the object or I can say human that is entering. And accordingly, this will start activated for 10 seconds. It will disinfect you because there are 16 nozzles inside. And then once you are out, assuming that you are almost disinfected, right? So this tunnel actually we have installed already. It is in the working condition since one and a half year. So I'm just walking in and you can see nozzles are starting automatically, right? They just started spraying this liquid on me. Now it's not new like so many videos you must have seen on television also and media also, right? 
but we try to build our own tunnel right we, we wanted the size and everything according to symbiosis and accordingly we install this now from this uh, now this is common everywhere you find it but another problem we found that uh, people are coming but they are not wearing face mask right so we thought that why we cannot build a product so we actually created a he health kiosk this is about to get installed at symbiosis now what this will do if you remember if you go to a mall or even at your institute let's say the security guard is keeping that manual gun it keeps on you right or on your hand and to capture the thermal body temperature right now why a person is required why we can it cannot be automated because my area is iot finally so we thought that we can build a kiosk so like atm we can just stand in front of it and i can see my body temperature live on a screen so the screen you can see here if you stand in front of this it will show you a body temperature live and those who are not wearing face mask so there is a camera here which will capture people who are not wearing face mask it will create a report and that report will be sent to control room right so so that discipline can be maintained at the institute right so that was the idea so we thought that how we can develop a product now this kind of product is not available everywhere even couple of companies contacted us that you help us in building this kind of product here we have applied ai here right so first what we will do is we will do training of all the students who are at symbiosis and the faculties so uh, training of their faces will be given to the system and once the system knows it will get better accuracy right so that uh, the system will be more accurate compared to other systems right likewise uh, another example i want to discuss is this aragvi setu app right so what i keep on doing is i try to uh, keep on analyzing existing products and try to find the limitation of that and try to build a new product that is how my approach is right to work, work on or same way anirban sir also works that way right so from this uh, i try to find the limitation now i am sure that everybody has installed this right because everywhere uh, railway station airport everywhere this app is required but this app has some limitations one thing is using bluetooth you can come to know sitting at home that you are safe or not right but what if you are moving in particular area right so you are moving in let's say if i take example of uh, mumbai right any area let's say vasi right you are moving in that area and you don't know uh, the persons who are surrounding you Now let assume that one person has COVID. You are nearby that person, right? And as per ICMR guideline, what? So uh, let me give you an example, practical example. Assume that a person has COVID, right? And you are here somewhere. Now you are within the vicinity of two meters, right? And as per ICMR guidelines given by our AIMS uh, Medical Institute, right? If you are here almost ten to fifteen minutes, that means what? You are a direct suspect, right? For others. for people who are in the surrounding atmosphere now you don't know this person you got affected now you will move in the area so all these people around will also get affected right so i call this people as indirect suspects now if you remember last year one incident happened that some people were you know, they were actually uh, they had covid and they were in the hospital and they ran away from there right? and they went to different regions of india now so it was very almost impossible to track those persons so this idea actually i got last year that why we cannot have a system so i call this system as counteract which can actually find people using gps location not only this if it is connected to government repository i can come to know that in particular area in mumbai how many people are suspect right and if it is connected to government repository i can come to know their mobile numbers also i can call them and i can do testing of those people rather than random testing or you uh, no take example of dharavi right we all know right so there such systems can really work right so i build a system called counter x system right and so that the limitation of arabic setu app can be covered right so the so this system starts functioning assuming that a particular person is covid right from that so this should be connected to government repository and then it will give you all the results that i'm talking right uh, another uh, idea actually we worked together uh, on that is solar refrigerator now again this idea we uh, came then right, during pandemic only to our mind that uh, no because we need to preserve all those things food items and all but there was lockdown so now you are you have a very small refrigerator right and sometimes you know, even electricity was getting affected and you not know, lot of people complain that it is not working and all right so we thought that why we cannot build a solar refrigerator so and the question was let's say we put solar refrigerator outside right then how this will work because it requires solar energy and you know that sun will move from east to west so when this movement will happen this refrigerator will not get the required solar energy so what will happen the product that is inside will get affected right so what we thought let's apply iot here so we so we use this solar collector which will actually absorb energy from the sun 
now whenever sun will move this collector will also move in the similar direction using motor right so using motor so we are operating that motor by iot so this this solar collector will move in with the sun direction so that similar solar energy will get and so that the product that is there inside the refrigerator will not get affected right so it's a very good business idea uh, in the market uh, ai refrigerator is available by whirlpool but solar refrigerator is, is still under research and people are still thinking that now how to build this design and all it's very complex thing even solar plane is available uh, if you search on google you'll find a solar plane that actually visited the whole world but solar refrigerator is a big concern and currently it's a requirement of the hour right now the reason i'm talking about some more healthcare projects because what is happening is uh, let's say if we take our example you are from management i am from engineering but we are not medical experts right we both are not a medical experts now basically we still we both still love technology somehow we try to bring some technology in very solutions but doctors hate technology so there is a big gap between doctors medical people and the other people right so that's why this domain is very very big and that is where all right lot of innovations and inventions are required and that is where a lot of business idea can come from this so one of the idea i thought of uh, anyway i get take example of mumbai actually because in mumbai you know right the how fast your life is so everybody is very busy even people don't have time to spend time with their parents also right and specifically if i talk about middle aged people like us that right, we are we have family responsibilities other things so i don't have too much time right to talk to my parents and all so th this is where technology can play a role right so i built a system called smart aging system in 2019 so i'll give an example why i thought of this thing because recently when in mumbai couple of incident happened actually that uh, a lady was at home right a older lady and uh, like their son and daughter uh, that is their us right they are working in it company and they are there now after 6 months people actually came to know right that uh, she was suffering from some kind of disease called dementia dementia is a depression right it is uh, you feel loneliness because nobody is around you you don't have any companion right and somehow slowly 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 it will start reaching your mind and finally it will start affecting your body right that is how it works now the when this thing starts you cannot actually see from outside so there are no symptoms but your activities if you monitor it can give you a lot of information so there again that is where sensors can be used so again i published a paper in sensors journal called smart aging system so what i did uh, i actually connected various sensors at home right so myself and couple of uh, researchers from uh, sweden and new zealand actually worked together on this so we actually installed the sensors in three different houses one in india sweden and new zealand so that now because it's a common problem everywhere all over the world it's called dementia right it is psychological disease that you feel lonely you enter into depression and suddenly it will start affecting your different uh, organs and everything right so this particular device is called eand sensor now what it does is it will tell you the usage of this particular appliance via mobile app so via internet you are anywhere you can come to know that someone at your home is using this device right likewise this microwave one you can come to know so let's say at midnight someone is waking now they are using refrigerator microwave one right they they want to you know do something with the food and something and then this happens four days a week let's say every week four days a person is waking at midnight and then next day morning elderly people what happens is they don't have enough sleep so after four hours suddenly at 4 am in the morning they'll wake up and they start doing their regular activity so this shows that they don't have regular lifestyle so they have irregular lifestyle so this is first indication of dementia that something is wrong now this you cannot do it physically but system can do it the system will capture all this data and again what is iot analyzing raw information convert it into intelligent form right so not only this even let's say so i put actually pressure sensor at near the toilet that right? so i can come to know that even that duration even uh, who is moving in particular room so presence of a person all those things i try to find as well as the change in the temperature and humidity at home right so all these sensors have helped me to get lot of data now this data basically uh, what i try to do was i try to connect to again analyze it and connect with the web portal so that i can come to know that where are the anomalies or what which activities should be improved for my parents for example or let me give one another example you know that uh, generally elderly people fall right in a washroom or when you are not at home and this accident happens but there is a sensor called magnetic hall so what it can do is or uh, actually accelerometer also is there in your smartphone so accelerometer magnetic hall and gyroscope these are the sensors can be used 
and it can detect a person as fall so without camera in your room because you don't keep camera in your bedroom now let's say in washroom same thing happened because you don't need camera in a washroom also right but what if this has happened and a sensor has captured this movement and immediately you are notified then you can take some action you can call hospital you can call doctor and you can do some action right so this is where where nobody can reach sensors can reach so sensors have become our eyes now if i take a practical example now if if you if you are in your car right your parking sensor is ultrasonic sensor which will help you to park your car in the reverse direction right there is ir sensor which will help you to detect different people right even uh, your horn right which is connected that is also a, a kind of sensor even a camera is a motion sensor that's right? so everywhere we are surrounded by sensors right so the sensors are our eyes now which we get lot of data and information and if we analyze this we can actually solve a lot of problems right so that was the idea so this extended work of that that actually i try to detect dementia so first work was on finding the anomalies from the routine activity and then what i try to find is uh, like uh, activities like sleeping so you can see now for dementia people elderly people what happens sometimes they sleep for 16 hours sometimes they only sleep for 4 to 5 hours that's right? so you can see that variation in this sometimes they repeat the same activity so they brush their teeth again they do the same activity again or they cook again right so because they forget it after some time they forget that activity and they keep on doing it again right so actually i worked on this my actual research area is healthcare informatics right so i worked on various Shandil, health problems yeah this this seems to be very interesting we have various specializations at our institute wow. so maybe we would uh, we can have uh, we like we have healthcare management at our institute Yes, sure. So these things uh, seem to be very interesting, and I think so. We need a focused audience. Also, uh, would have been very uh, efficient. I think so. So we yes, really sure. look forward to sir more detailed sessions. But right now, students are posting yes, sending so we, questions to us. Just a couple minutes, and I'm almost done. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, last uh, this is the last application. In this COVID, what happened and all, you know. So we actually doctors need a system. Now we are not telling that technology can replace doctors, right? Again, healthcare domain I'm telling. But what if we have some web interface available where you upload your CT scan and X-ray image, and you can come to know the probability of COVID, right? Then this will can really help you this information doctors in diagnosing particular patient, right? So this is another example, entrepreneurship point of view that how this can be converted to some kind of product, right? so yeah i'm almost done uh, yeah and those who are interested i have a small youtube channel so you can just search my name and youtube and you'll find that right and a lot of videos such videos are there which you can refer yeah so now i have i'm happy to take any questions if anybody has yeah myself and dr anban both want to take any questions if it is there and thank you so much ma'am uh, for everything the pleasure is ours uh, i see few budding entrepreneurs here who have sent us few questions sure sure so they do not know exactly whom to ask so puna uh, ma'am uh, may i take one we question we both are there uh, we both are there to answer yes yes i'll yes. take one question uh, this is from a student who is uh, worried he says technology is creating number of opportunities how should managers tap these yes so it's a very good question actually uh, yeah so i'll tell you actually what is happening is uh, technology is definitely changing our life right as i took example of sensors but it's not true that it can replace human so very simple example is we have cognitive ability right so we can see we can hear we can sense we can smell that technology cannot do basically basically machine is nothing but a dumb thing which only understand zero and one but we have additional abilities given by god which can do a lot of things but what is happening is our roles are changing so in every field for example if i talk about symbiosis mba uh, that is also well known uh, like, like your institute so there we teach ai there so engineering faculty actually go there and we teach them iot in ai because what is happening in ai also because that is where analytics is applied right and in business also a lot of analytics is required whether it's finance area or production or any area finally lot of analytics is required so what is happening day by day is our roles are changing so with that pace if we are not updating then machine will replace us so there is a threat of replacing you know for example even you will see after 3 4 years a uh, rj machine learning rj who can crack jokes also which right now machine learning cannot do but you will see that uh, and everywhere now you uh, you try to call access bank now right and previously if you remember uh, those the buttons were there so if you press one it will take you here 2 3 4 now there is a voice command you speak that what is the issue you have you you, know, you tell your query it will take you directly there 
So there is AI working. It's called chatbot. Okay. So everywhere now you are not finding humans there. So most of the call centers, I can tell you that that will be replaced for sure. Because these machines are far better than, no, even they don't require breaks and all. Likewise, uh, if you, uh, there is one concept called SBI, State Bank of India in touch. So they are creating banks without humans. So only one or two humans are there. Everything, all the banking operations are automated. So currently there are 15 to 20 staff is there, no? clerk is there, cashier is there. That is, so you, if you search on YouTube, you'll find that video. And already a couple of branches have already started. So it is called, so via video conferencing, people are sitting in Bangalore, you can ask your queries. Uh, you can just take your other card and all, you can deposit your, and you can start your account. Straight away, you don't need anyone. That is how technology is changing. So, so basically our roles are changing, but technology can never replace human. I mean, I don't believe so. So this uh, extensibles and all those movies are there, but I don't think so. That will happen next 10 years at least, but it is happening for sure that you are right that, uh, and that's where we require some awareness. That's how we started teaching in MBA, analytics, AI, even some IoT. So now some faculties are now talking to us. So now what we've started is borderless university that everyone who is expert in some field should uh, take that subject. Not necessary. It is from uh, this particular discipline only. So that is what slowly we've started at our institute. So it is, it will take some time because everybody's still not uh, like open for this. And it's been to think of some policies also, you know, but this is how things are moving and we need to finally try to catch up as much as possible. Sure, ma'am. Yeah, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. so uh, there's uh, one more question that I have. Sure. Uh, sure. So, you know, when we talk about internet and internet of things and things like that, uh, the concern for security and, uh, you know, safety, privacy also, you know, pops yeah, so up. that is true, actually. Yeah, so how uh, much concern should Yeah, so be? currently in IoT, so again, it is an opportunity for management people also that contribute. That currently in IoT, not a single security algorithm is there which can secure. But still, uh, the problem is we want information on fingertip. So we are not ready to know. Even if you now we talk about geometry and all, what is happening is we want everything at home. We are not even ready to go to a restaurant and enjoy that. So most of the time, because we are tired, we are coming from duty and all, and then we want everything on. Now what those apps are doing is they are actually trying to find you know, your patterns. That what kind of food you like. You like Chinese and in Chinese, which kind of food and all. And they keep on sending you some reminders, some discounts and this and that. And somehow this thing happens. So even though there is no security, obviously there is some security on cloud labor or some mobile apps and all. But IoT is combination of four layers, as I said, physical network, uh, this app, processing and application. Their security right now is under research. So people are doing a lot of research. So there is something called blockchain, if uh, they've heard of. So that is right now, it's unbreakable algorithm that is right now available. But then integrating that with IoT is very complex because you can see that air pollution example, that so many stations are all over India. Now how to connect everything in that blockchain area? And because the blockchain says that one block only knows information on the block. So block is nothing but one location. So one location only knows another location. If there are hundred locations, everybody is not aware of each other. In that case, it's very, very difficult to implement it. But I have some information that Axis Bank has implemented this uh, blockchain algorithm. SBI failed, but I can say that if, you are, if your money is there in Access Bank, it's safe because they have implemented blockchain. So if entrepreneurship point of view, if I say, that's why even we have our saving account in Access Bank here. But, but all banks are now trying. So if one will do, uh, competitive spirit is there, so everyone will try to do the same. So yeah, but security is definitely a concern. That is where some work is happening currently. Sir, I can see a question in the chat box. Shobit has, yeah, Shobit has asked this question. Uh, he wants to know more about space mining, sir. How things work when we build a robot for space mining? For uh, when space science he's talking about. I mean, outside yes. the Earth atmosphere. Okay, mm -hmm. there actually the problem is uh, there is no gravitation force, right? So all the physics actually fails there, right? Because you know that if you've seen some uh, even movies also, that now it behaves very differently. So, but we have a concept called parallel computing that can be applied there in the space also. That's how international space stations are done nowadays there, right? People are actually staying there. And you know, if you know the company called SpaceX is trying to build actually you know, a station where any human can actually you know, take a ride and go there. 
so go to moon and you can even buy a house and property and all those things are now people are talking so that is possible however the complete principle physics actually you know it's challenge there but we have you no know, brains who can do that also so they will not even leave moon and we, we might see some resistances there also yeah, actually i want to add on one thing because okay. when we talking of the space no so there yeah, the so, you know uh, the atmos there is no atmosphere right so whatever the particles you are getting here so that will not act like that so what the sensor we are talking here it will not work there so that's why you need some special kind of uh, material special kind of uh, technology so there we can work so people are working uh, on this yeah but so, one example yeah. i can talk about that london to paris tunnel underwater yes, yes. that is where some underwater sensors are there and which is getting some information right so in case of threat uh, you know scenario and all so there are sensors placed underwater uh, and if you know no, that's the biggest uh, tunnel in the world between london and paris underwater there is a train and there are some sensors are there even they are using internet i mean that's how good the technology is reach so but what you are telling is right space is something and it's better that no, we humans have not reached there otherwise we do you know what we'll do there also. yes it is very <laughs> difficult to do but still people are working even yeah. for aquatic uh, that's animals and their cultures uh, to observe so some yes. technology has come up so that is working on the sea level because yes as we are going to 10 kilometers 15 kilometers in the day but if i take one example of mumbai actually that uh, reliance has done that petroleum gas thing is there a bombay high we call yes, it yes yes so they have actually converted uh, automated it so when you give that initial that petroleum gas all those processes are automated now it was manual previously the complete thing that then at the end we get the product for petrol and diesel at the end so that is completely automated so even oceans we have not left only planets are pending now outside yeah i think we are completely out of time now we are still getting questions sir so maybe uh, students you all can go through uh, linkedin profile which was already mailed to you or maybe we can connect back to the students sir and maybe okay. we can direct the questions more because i can also we can also see iot and ai like it's immense sure. trying to uh, you know compress it in two hours and students have now started taking interest so we can surely sir connect back to you for more sure, questions sure. Yes. Yeah, it's a great initiative from your side huh, to manage like management students still they are aware of this so they know how to use that in different ideas yes, yes. Sure, sir. thank As you so we much we have delivered lot of sessions for engineering but this is the first sure, time sure. we are coming up with for management because yes we have teach them but uh, first time we are uh, a kind of session no where we are just discussing some, such kind of mm-hmm. problems to them so it's a very good experience to us also so sir so, please yeah. expect more uh, queries and more uh, you know questions we would be surely connecting back but now like we have positive sure, of sure. time yes so sure. maybe dr poonam maybe uh, we move ahead indeed a very insightful session i must say sir uh, it was interesting to know about the touchless technology and the fascinating world of internet of things its different uses our uh, young inquisitive minds i'm surely would uh, would have a lot of takeaways from this session and also inspiration to be entrepreneurs in the field uh looking at your videos i'm sure they would have uh, taken a you know a cue or two from uh, those videos i uh, thank both our speakers dr sur and dr pandya for taking time out and sharing with us the scope of internet of things and artificial intelligence in entrepreneurship post covid also i thank our it department for all the back end support the staff and faculty of uh, we school and of course the audience for their presence thank you everyone and have a great week ahead namaste thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you all thank you sir thank you, thank you so much yeah thank you so now